Okay, to start off, I want to ask a simple question, but let's see if you can answer it. Okay, I have three clear things here. Clear glass, clear water, and clear air. But when I was blowing bubbles, you could clearly see the glass, see the water, and see the air. But how could you see all three of them? All three of them are clear and translucent, so how did you know they were there? So the answer to this is that each of these materials bends light differently. So you can tell that the object's here because your eye picks up the object and sees that there's bent light around it, so it knows there's something there. But what if we had something that was clear and didn't bend light? Well then we wouldn't be able to see it at all. Okay everyone, before I start I want to tell you about a giveaway I'm doing. I have never done a giveaway on my channel, I thought it's about time. So I'm going to be giving away five Amazon Echo Dots. I'll put a link in the description for how to enter the contest. It's a link that has five really easy science questions. A lot of them based on my videos, so if you don't know the answer, you're free to look it up on YouTube and watch my video about it. One of the rules of the contest is you have to be my subscriber, so if you're not subscribed yet, now is the time to do it. And also you have to share this video because this video is awesome, just like all my other videos. So go take the Action Lab quiz and enter my contest, now let's get back to the video. Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to make paper become see-through, and also how to make glass seemingly disappear. And I'll be using my method to open a top secret envelope that I'm not supposed to open. So light travels through different materials at different speeds. And that's why translucent objects still bend light. For example, I have a glass rod here, and when I stick it in the water, you can still see it. And that's because water and glass bend light at different rates, and so you can see them in there. And the degree at which something bends light is called its refractive index. So glass and water have different refractive indices, and so you can see the glass in the water even though both of them are clear. But if I take another translucent liquid that is not water, that has a refractive index that's closer to glass, then the glass seemingly disappears. So this liquid is glycerin, and its refractive index is very close to the glass and so you can barely see it at all. So again, this answers the question, the reason you can see two translucent things is just because their refractive indices are different. But if they're the same, then you can't see it at all. That's why things like aerogel are so hard to see because they look almost just like smoky air. But you can see here that the aerogel's refractive index is very close to that of the air, and so it's hard to see other than the color of the material. So how can you use this knowledge to see through paper? All you have to do is find some material that has the same refractive index as paper or something very close to it. So right now we can't see through this paper because the paper is made of cellulose and it's also filled with little air pockets. So between the cellulose and the air, they have very different refractive indices and so there's a lot of light bending that goes on. So essentially none of the light is going through it but it's getting scattered all different directions. But if we can replace the air in this paper with something that has a closer refractive index to the cellulose, then we should be able to see through it. And something that's close to that is isopropyl alcohol. So let's see what happens when we pour isopropyl alcohol on this paper. You can easily see what's below it. So the reason now that we can see through this paper almost as if it's not there is because we've now filled in all of those little tiny air holes with isopropyl alcohol. And so the light doesn't have to bounce around as much and doesn't get scattered as much, so it can go right through it, hit the paper, and come back to our eyes, and we can still see the drawing that's below there. So why did I choose isopropyl alcohol? The reason is because it evaporates quickly and it doesn't dissolve the paper. So you can see that this paper is soaking wet, but it's not falling apart. Water would also make the paper translucent because it has a refractive index close to that of the isopropyl alcohol. But the problem is it dissolves cellulose and so it would make the paper come apart. So what's happening here is also the reason why when you eat greasy food on a paper plate, you can see through the paper plate. Because the grease's refractive index is closer to that of the cellulose than air. A different way of saying that is grease bends light about the same as cellulose does. So what can we do with this knowledge of making paper see-through? 
you can read top secret letters. So let's say you have some letter that you're not supposed to open, but you still want to know what's inside of it. Well, just get some isopropyl alcohol. Let's see what this says. Okay, here we go. Looks like, looks like there's even double layers of paper in here. So using this method, you can easily see through the envelope, even with double layered paper inside, and see what's inside. Well, this looks like a very important note, and they'll never know I opened it. See, once the paper dries, even after being soaked in isopropyl alcohol, it's not wrinkly at all, and you can never know that it was soaked in the alcohol. I should note that glycerin and cellulose have almost exactly the same refractive index, and so it makes the paper extremely clear when you put glycerin on it. The problem is that if you're trying to secretly read anything, the glycerin doesn't evaporate, so and you're left with this greasy mess on it. So if you're a little confused by my definition of refractive index, the refractive index is just the ratio between the speed of light in a vacuum and the speed of light in that specific material. So for example, the refractive index of water is 1.33, so that means light travels 1.3 times slower in water than it does in a vacuum. And the closer the index of refraction of two materials are, the less light bounces off and the less you can see the surface of that material. A good example is if I take this chunk of air and this chunk of air and I move them together, you can't see them, right? <laughs> because their index of refraction is exactly the same. So I just barely touched on the information about refractive index, but it's actually a really important concept, but it accounts for almost everything that happens in the field of optics. It's the reason that rainbows form, it's the reason that lenses work, and it's the reason I can see into top secret envelopes. Hey, how's it going everyone? Thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. If you have any suggestions or any comments you want to make, let me know in the comments section. Any questions you have, I'll try to answer them. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. And you can also hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.